Yo, good morning everybody. It's Curtis back with another portfolio update. We have got so much to cover off in this update. So, you know, I don't want to keep you waiting. I'm going to get straight into it. But before I do, um, I just wanted to say um, a massive thank you to everyone that's been um, following the channel and subscribed to the channel. Um, this marks the six uh, month milestone of me having the channel um, or just maybe a week over six months. And um, when I started the channel originally in December, um, it, it took on a really different direction where I was sort of focused on animated series and other stuff. Um, and then I think it was about March when I actually started doing portfolio updates because I didn't really do updates from the very beginning. I sort of did a three month retrospective view, see how people felt about it. And then based off the feedback, whether or not I would continue doing so. Um, and the feedback was obviously really, really good, really, really positive. So, um, it's the six month mark and you know i just want to say thank you to everyone that's been subscribed to the channel that's been commenting and that's been supporting the channel um it's been greatly 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 appreciated um i'm i've been appreciative of it and i've learned a lot um as well as you know i've hopefully helped people learn a lot as well so um it's been a great journey for myself um and obviously hopefully for you guys as well now um today today's portfolio update we've got so much to cover off um and so um, I'm just going to begin with a more broader, broader view. So, you know, obviously it's a six month milestone. In the last video I put up two days ago, um, I talk about how I sort of reflect on my progress over the last six months. And, um, you know, one thing I want to really say is that I think the next six months to 18 months um, is going to be a really, really critical time for both the US, UK, um, you know, and in fact, the global economy. Um, and I think, to be honest, the next six to 18 months will probably shape the future of the global economy for the next 10 years. Um, I genuinely think it's going to be that pivotal. Um, in the last video that I've just uploaded, please go check it out. I've mentioned the volume of um, significant events that's happened in the UK, um, which is, and obviously the US, which has obviously sent stocks um, in a spiraling effect from Brexit to Theresa May resignation, to Trump-China trade war, to inverted yield curves, recession indicators, um, so forth and so forth. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of... <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot of uncertainty still to come. So, you know, from the very fact that, you know, in the UK, we're trying to find a new prime minister, you know, it'll be a second consecutive prime minister that hasn't actually been elected by the general public, um, which I think is quite significant. Um, you know, there's, a, there's talks of obviously a second referendum um, in regards to Brexit. Um, so that's obviously going to have, you know, a massive impact to, you know, the shape of the economy going forward in the US. You know, obviously the 2020 presidential election is coming up. Um, you've got obviously what's going on with Trump, China, Trump and Mexico now um, and all of those trade war discussions. Um, and, there's you know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's really, really happen, happening across the global economy, which is just um, sent a lot of uncertainty. <clears throat> I need to, I need to um, drink some ginger, man, damn. Um, sent a lot of uncertainty into the market. So, you know, I think, yeah, the next six to 18 months is going to be really, really crucial. And it's going to really set the foundation for, you know, I would say probably the next five to 10 years um, that sort of comes after it. Um, the first thing I wanted to update you guys on is um, I've bought some new stocks. So I've bought three new stocks that I've added to the portfolio. Um, that is Facebook, Chevron, and I'm now using two accounts because I can't buy Chinese stocks in my ISA um, and Weibo. So Facebook, Chevron and Weibo are the new additions to the uh, portfolio at the moment. And so it means I'm obviously using both the investment ISA and also my basic account just because um, Chinese stocks aren't available in the ISA. And um, why did I choose those stocks? So, you know, Based on everything that was happening with the Trump, China, um, US economy, um, based on the fact that I felt that my portfolio wasn't really diversified, um, I wanted to sort of, you know, have a few more growth stocks within the portfolio, still trying to maintain uh, an element of being undervalued, um, but at the same time, trying to get stocks that, you know, don't pay a dividend, not really concerned about the dividend, but concerned that hopefully it will grow at some uh, stage in the next you know few years uh, quite significantly 
Um, Facebook, I felt, um, has great fundamentals. Uh, the the data, the profits, the the revenues, um, the forecasts for Facebook, I think, are really, really strong and really positive. Yes, they've had some negative press in terms of privacy um, and some other stuff, but I think that's contributed to them being quite undervalued at the moment. So I think, from a timing standpoint, it was um, really, really important for me. I should really go on the Facebook screen when I'm doing that. So apologies. Um, I also believe that you know when Facebook introduces um, Instagram commerce um, to allow people to really um, purchase directly within the application um, that's going to be very very significant um, Facebook have also announced their um, their own uh, currency that they're going to introduce which will allow people from WhatsApp um, Facebook Messenger and Instagram to kind of send each other money via the application using their own blockchain powered uh, digital currency um, and I think Facebook has the brains in the organization to do it. If you really think about, you know, the way the world has gone over the last 10 years, Facebook really is the pioneers of a lot of it. Um, I wouldn't say all of it. I don't want to sort of make that statement. But, you know, in terms of social media, in terms of the way we connect with people, in terms of, you know, online businesses, in terms of how um, just how society has changed and evolved, Facebook has been, you know, a pivotal part of that. Um, and so I do think that they've still got a lot of growth in them and a lot of innovation in them. And with some of those things that I just previously mentioned, um, I do think that it's going to be a profitable business um, in the future for me to sort of, you know, get a return. So that's the reason why I chose Facebook. Um, I chose Chevron um, mainly for diversification. Um, you know, I didn't really think I'd get into an oil and gas um, business. Um, but Chevron seemed very undervalued um, and it also seemed that it had great um, fundamentals but also great and um, they also pay a dividend as well which is nice and considering the fact that recently um, my dividends has been the, the key component to sort of keeping my portfolio at some reasonable amount of loss um, you know I felt it was important to if I'm going to diversify to not just go gun ho and to try and at least be a little bit safe so it was a little bit more of a diversification cautious play um, but I still do think that there is growth um, in Chevron. Um, and if you read a lot of the analyst reports and the stuff that, that's happening surrounding Chevron, it seems um, relatively decent. Um, this is going to be pretty annoying now because I'm going to have to skip ways to basic account to talk about just the one stock. Um, but I chose Weibo of the Chinese stock. So, you know, I know the question that's floating in all of you guys' heads. You know, why did you choose Weibo over Baidu over Alibaba? Um, and for me, um, it was, it was, you know, hi Ben Davies, thanks for subscribing. Um, it, for me, it was a pretty much a, quite a simple choice. So, um, Barba, um, I really, really like the business, um, obviously, um, but I just think at this time it's still currently very overpriced and because of the uncertainty with China and the US, it just didn't feel the right time to get into it. So I think it's, I will monitor it and see if it, it might always stay overvalued. A lot of growth stocks do do that. Um, however, it might um, reduce and pull back a little bit to a point where I feel like it's a bit more of a reasonable entry price. So I'm going to I'm going to monitor Barber for the future, but it felt quite overvalued. Baidu um, felt um, quite um, uh, fairly valued. So where is Baidu? So when I looked at the fundamentals for Baidu and sort of analyst reports, it seemed like actually 110 is the is the reasonable price. So I wasn't too sure in terms of you know what his growth outlook was going to be and so that's why I decided to opt against Baidu whereas Weibo um, seemed undervalued um, still with great earnings uh, and a great forecast as well so that's the reason why I chose uh, Weibo out of all of the Chinese stocks doesn't mean that I won't um, invest in any of the other ones at some stage in the future um, but I felt that you know one was overpriced one was fairly priced and one was underpriced so I decided to go for the underpriced option um, and that was my rationale whether right or wrong um, I would have also bought Amazon, but until free trade bring in fractional shares, um, Amazon won't make an appearance in my portfolio just simply because it's, you know, 2K a share or, or whatever. So, um, you know, I really apologize because what I'm talking about is not on the screen just because of the switching. Um, but yeah, so I would have liked to have bought Amazon um, as well. I do um, see it's overpriced, but I just think, you know, I, I personally think the the Amazon business um, and the way uh, it's set up is just going to continue to grow. The services from a B2B standpoint, when you think about Amazon Web Server and, and how, you know, 
ever growing amount of websites etc are powered by Amazon um, I don't know whether you guys know that depending on whether you're involved in tech or not um, but then you've just got all of their other business lines and the stuff that they're trying to do in terms of Amazon Go retail that like, I just think you know they're going to be a powerhouse of the future but I'm not willing to really put 2k up front um, right now so I'd wait until fractional shares came in and then potentially maybe um, added some money in there in the future in terms of dividends um, I've received um, a hundred pounds in dividends this month, which is really really good. Um, and it made me think, you know, what what type of investor am I? You know, I always evaluate. I still think I'm a value investor. Obviously, now I've bought some growth stocks, which some of them aren't, you know, fairly as undervalued as I'd normally go for. But I've got some stocks that are in a dividend, and I'd say value investor sits in the middle of dividend versus growth. So I still think I'm a value investor. I have some growth stocks, I have some dividend stocks, um, but generally I'm looking for a fair price that can grow at some stage in the future. Um, so a hundred pound a dividend has been great um, to see that this month. Next month I've probably got I think another fifty pounds, um, which is good. And then the following month, because of some of the special dividend payments, particularly Taylor Wimpy, um, which you can see here, um, which you know I've done a video on that's been you know a special dividend of I think about six point eight percent, and it's sitting at about eleven percent now annual dividend. Um, so, you know, there'll be some money returning again next couple of months from a dividend standpoint, which I think is great. So, you know, I do think, you know, one of the key things I've learned over the last six months is definitely to make sure you have some good income um, stocks in your portfolios and that will help you weather out the storm um, when your portfolio uh, takes a dive. Speaking of dive, in terms of my overall portfolio progress, I'm, I'm sitting at about a 7% loss. Now that is a 7% loss from the last time I invested. So I always look at it on a month to month rolling basis as opposed to just from the very first time I invested. Um, and the reason why I do that is because as you guys know, I do a modified dollar cost averaging approach. And that means the stocks that have fallen the most, I give more money to each month. Um, and the stocks that have fallen the least, I give less money to. And I only really break those rules if a stock is just um, completely out of whack or some stock is about to pay a really good dividend, um, or I'm introducing some new stocks, so I need to kind of put more money into some new stocks that I'm putting into the platform. So those might be the reasons why I might break that rule. But generally speaking, if I maintain the same list of stocks, that's the rule I follow. So that's the kind of percentage, is the way I like to look at um, my percentages um, going forward. In terms of the biggest fallers, Imperial Brands is um is is significant. It's about you know uh twenty percent uh decline, um since the last time I invested. It's sitting at minus eighteen percent overall. Um, as you can see here, you know I was buying Imperial Brands at around the twenty five mark. It's now at the nineteen mark. So you know it's taken a significant hit. Um, I mentioned in my previous portfolio update why that is. Um, it's obvious why it was due to the ESIG business not performing and their earnings revenue update being poor. But they seem to have a strategy in place to counteract that going forward. So I do trust that it will. I mean, seeing 125 losses, it, it does hurt. But um, I do think that it will recover in at some stage in the future. Um, so I'm going to take this as a buying opportunity. I'm not going to go gun ho with it, but I will um, continue to add money um, and maybe sometimes overfund Imperial Brands a little bit for um, for the future. I think it also pays a quarterly dividend as well. So um, I guess that helps um, somewhat a little bit. The other, the next biggest faller is CYBG. Now, I was asked by someone, why do I continue to invest in CYBG? Which I think it was a really, really um, worthwhile question. At the time, CYBG wasn't looking um, really, really undervalued. Um, so I thought, you know, let me sort of do some research into CYBG um, and continue. I mean, I, I always research my stocks anyway. Um, in the video, the most important video investment video I'll ever make, I always show you that I, guys, I monitor my stocks on a, on a, regular basis what's going on with them because I think that's part of you know managing actively managing your own fund and um you know CYBG's growth forecast is just incredible it's about 60% revenue um growth forecast um it's going to be a profitable business um you know they're going to raise their dividend they're expecting to raise their dividend they're still considered to be extremely undervalued um the acquisition of virgin money has helped and contributed to their growth sure they do have a lot of competition in the banking sector i think it's a really really competitive sector not just from traditional retail banks but also a lot of the digital entrants that have entered the market um however i think c by cybg um you know 
as long as they can continue to mobilize and do the right things i think they will they will recover um, in share price so um i'm gonna hold um again i'm not i mean solely i'm losing 13 quid on it but i think that cybg could be one of the ones that um sort of does well uh, in the future the next biggest loss so imperial brand cybg the next biggest loss so far is robo global so for me it's about 10 percent loss um from the last time i invested um and you know for me it's quite understandable so you know so robotics and automation etf a lot of their holdings are chinese um and and asian um shall i say um stocks or companies or equities depending on which word you want to use and so you know considering the whole effect of the china trump trade war um and how chinese stocks fell um and how a lot of european and uk stocks fell and some american stocks rose um partly a reason why i added chevron as well um is that you know the effect has been quite negative on them so i don't believe that you know that means that any of those businesses are you know technically any worse than they were before trump sent out a tweet um, as we know i think 70 80 percent of movements in the stock market are based on sentiment about 20 percent or less maybe is actually based on the value of a company a value of an organization so um it's dropped considerably and i see that as is it's a very very good price to get in um so i'm just going to continue purchasing robo global and as i mentioned robo global um and the s p 500 um they're like one of my retirement uh I guess roots I would say um so I'm just going to continue investing into them for for the long term as you know I believe AI and automation is going to be you know critical um in the next sort of 10 years um the next uh stock to talk to you about is Lloyd's so you know I think Lloyd's has gone down to be really really undervalued um and I think again it's the Brexit effect is what I'm is what I'm sort of calling it um and so, you know, because of the amount of uncertainty around Brexit, remember, if you actually really think about it, um, just really sort of deep what's going on with Brexit at the moment, nothing has actually happened. Like, that is that is the bottom line, really and truly. A lot of talk, a lot of conjecture, but nothing has actually happened. Everyone voted, or at least 52% of the nation voted to leave. Um, and since that vote, you know, we've been just talking about how we're going to leave, negotiate and negotiate and negotiate and negotiate if we're going to leave. And now the topic of actually if we're going to leave is being uh, resurfaced and it might even be a second referendum. Um, considering the fact that Theresa May has resigned and obviously we're going to have a new prime minister, um, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. And I think banking stocks tend to get hit a lot when we have that uncertainty. Um, so I I think, you know, the Brexit effect for me is that when we get a more clearer understanding of what Brexit actually means and if it's going to happen or not, I believe a lot of these banking stocks will recover because that, that sentiment is no longer going to be present. Um, and I think Lloyd's is going to be at the forefront for a lot of that. So I, I consider them very undervalued. They've got a great PE ratio, great growth, um, great net asset value. Um, their fundamentals are, are strong. Um, and so really and truly the reason why they're so underpriced is is due to this um, and I think also irrespective of what route Brexit takes it could actually benefit Lloyd's so you know Lloyd's right now for me is battling with uncertainty but it's not actually battling with any of the outcomes because you know if we um, if we you know remain via second referendum referendum then the bank of england is likely to raise interest rates and a raise in interest rates is going to you know significantly benefit lloyds and other banks as well if we leave um then i think actually the certainty of where we're at and what actually it means for the public is now no no is now going to be present and the uncertainty is going to disappear and i think that's also going to benefit lloyds maybe not at the same rate but i think it will also benefit so you know i see lloyds as a great undervalued stock um i'm going to keep on you know buying as much as i possibly can of lloyds um and just hoping that when everything recovers in the next few years that i'll really really sort of um be happy with my decisions uh now effectively um that's what i'm going to look for 
Um, in terms of housing, Taylor Wimpy, um, I created a video on Taylor Wimpy about their special dividend. So um, I haven't got the dates in front of me, but I think their special dividend is around, the ex-dividend date is around the 6th of June, I believe. So that means on the 5th of June, by close, you need to have all of your shares in. And the record date would probably then be um, the 7th or 8th of June. Um, and that means then, you know, from the 9th onwards, you can sell and you would benefit, you would benefit from the share price, uh, the, sorry, the dividend, uh, special dividend payment. Now, that payment will come at some stage in July. Um, so when I mentioned before my July payments, Taylor Wimpy is one of them. Um, and they're paying a very, very um, strong special dividend payment. Um, now, dividend cover is quite low, but I think at this moment, it's not the biggest concern of mine. Um, what I do look for in a housing stock is their price to book ratio. I also look for, you know, their order book and making sure that they're actually keeping up with their sales and their 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 sort of order targets. Um, and Taylor Wimpy um, has increased year on year. Um, so versus where they were 2018 this time, they've gone, uh, you know, a, f a few hundred million higher, which is good in terms of their orders. Their sales have increased, um, which is good. Um, so their actual whole value is actually a lot stronger um, but also their cancellations have, have stayed constant so it's not at you know a, 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 an increase in orders but an increase in cancellations their cancellations have stayed constant but their sales have increased which um, is a very very healthy outlook um, and considering some of the help that they get from the government that will cease around 2021 I still think there's a bit of juice left in the Taylor Wimpy tank so to speak so I do think for the next year at least uh, we shall see a stronger outlook now obviously housing stocks um, are greatly greatly affected um, by Brexit and the economy and sentiment and so forth um, so it is one to sort of be cautious and monitor but I do think um, overall the, the true value um, will potentially hold strong. Um, now, in terms of you know a stock to watch, I believe Vodafone is is one of those stocks. Um, you know, in recent times they cut their dividend. So as you can see, when you look at the, uh, I think it was the month. Yeah, their 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 share price just tanked, as you can kind of see here. Um, and this is because they decided to cut their dividend. So the headlines read, Vodafone cuts its dividend by 40%, which sounds crazy. And then a lot of people just sort of pull their money out. When you actually, you know, dig deeper into it, they're still going to pay a 5.5% annual dividend, which is a very, very strong annual dividend payment to get 5%. You know, you wouldn't be getting that in, you know, uh, a savings account, etc. So that's a very strong dividend payment. Um, and the reason why they cut their dividend is because they, they felt they couldn't maintain it so high. They've decided to reevaluate and invest more of that money into getting 5G um, launched. And so, you know, I think the business decisions and the rationale why is more important than what they actually do. And I think that goes for everything. Sometimes the intention um, is more important than the actual execution or the actual result or what's actually happening. So um, in this instance, I think Vodafone's intentions is very sound. Um, and I think because of that, um, I think their, their, their share price is going to grow. I also think because they're going to have the first mover advantage for 5G, I've mentioned this quite a bit, um, I think Vodafone, um, uh, their share price will increase uh, at some stage in the future. They're looking very undervalued at the moment. Um, and so I think Vodafone is a very, very undervalued price, uh, cheap, depending on you know which way you want to look at it. And so I do think at some stage in the future, um, when the 5G wave hits, Vodafone will benefit. I did read an article recently that says they potentially could get 5G as soon as July. Now, how true that is, I don't know. Um, and I don't know if they miss that July target now, what it will, what it will mean. So hopefully it's not a, a set in stone target. But, you know, I'm still thinking towards the end of the year anyway. That's my sort of horizon. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to sort of stick firm with Vodafone and try and scoop up as many shares as I possibly can. Um growing going growing going across the water to verizon which is another 5g first mover advantage um as you can see um verizon has been doing okay actually um and then it's kind of dropped recently for me but um effectively uh they're they're meant to be the first mover advantage from the u.s uh, maybe even global standpoint, mainly US actually. Their main competitors, AT&T, um, Sprint and T-Mobile. Uh, if you don't know, um, AT&T is the market leader in the US. Uh, they technically have better fundamentals than Verizon, um, but I think Verizon is a great, uh, you know, a great competitor to AT&T. Um, 
Sprint and T-Mobile are two um, smaller businesses, but they're actually trying to merge. However, their first application, I think, got declined. So if Sprint and T-Mobile don't merge, it could it could not. I wouldn't say it means the end for, for Sprint, but Sprint have even openly admitted that they might not be able to sustain their business um, if they don't merge with T-Mobile. Also, in terms of them rolling out 5G and so forth, it's going to be a lot difficult for Sprint and T-Mobile to do that separately. So, you know, the size of AT&T and Verizon, just to put into perspective, even if Sprint and T-Mobile merge, Verizon alone still has more subscribers, more users than both of them two combined. So, uh, and so does AT&T. So, um, I think, you know, Verizon for me feels like the underdog, um, but at the underdog in a strong enough position to really, really um, dominate the the, tele- the the telecoms industry, I guess, in the US, particularly when 5G uh, launches. So, you know, that's my, my, my rationale for Verizon. And so I'm just gonna, still going to hold and obviously buy more shares. Um, and hopefully when 5G launches, see, you know, realization in that, um, in that profit. Now, you guys know that I um, invest a thousand pound on a monthly basis. Um, there's a bit more in there than a thousand pounds a month, just um, primarily due to the fact that um, when I've seen some big drops, there were some big drops previously, um, I decided to add some more funds in at, at those times to try and sort of realize some potential. So there's a little bit more sitting in there. I now have to try and work out now that I have, I think, about 14 stocks. Um, if I'm going to continue with a thousand pounds a month, or if I'm going to try and increase it to say fourteen hundred, so on average it's one hundred per stock, or if I'm going to maintain and potentially skip some stocks, and I'm also potentially going to add more stocks. I don't. I still feel that I'm not as diversified as I should be. I am much, much, much more diversified than I was this time last month. So I'm really, really happy with the level of diversification. However, I feel that potentially I still could be a little bit more diversified. So, you know, my main focus is to try and work out what I can reasonably put in on a monthly basis and keep it consistent. But at the same time, um, making sure that I maintain, you know, healthy amount in cash and so forth, because, you know, I don't believe in putting all of the money in stocks just in case um, things, you know, hit the fan, which if a recession comes, you know, we could be looking at, you know, 40, 50 percent reduction in your actual um, not just your returns, but your actual principal amount, which is, uh, you know, it's going to hurt ridiculously. Um, Free Trade have announced that they're going to um, introduce a referral scheme. So look out for that. Um, and I'll, I'll start putting my links in the description. Um, and if you're, no, if you're not currently a subscriber to Free Trade, what that will mean is that if you sign up via the link, you will receive um, a free share in a, in a company. Um, where where the share price is between three pounds and eighty pounds, so you know if you if you're lucky enough to get an eighty pounds or a seventy pounds share, then that's seventy pounds in your pocket right there just for signing up. So if you're not a subscriber at the moment, I'd probably hold out for that because you that you you definitely get some money. Um, how much just basically depends on their randomized um, algorithm that's going to sort of distribute that to you. Um, I'm now sort of working out. You know what? I wish Free Trade could help me transfer some funds because. I, in my basic account, have sort of £15 left over just because of the share price. I would like to transfer this um, into the ISA, um, but I can't do so. That doesn't exist. I'd have to probably put it out and put it back in and that probably will come at a cost. So um, I'm probably going to have to try and buy some more things within the general account just to make um, use of, of the money uh, sitting there, especially in times when the share price is more than the money that's left over effectively. So that's the main things that I'm sort of focused on um, at the moment. But yeah, so overall, stocks have dropped. <laughs> stocks have dropped. I don't think it's the stocks, as I mentioned. I think predominantly it's the co- economy as a whole. And so, you know, I'm still quite confident. I'm still quite confident that the stocks will rise in time Um what that time frame is i don't know i can't i can't predict the future but i do think you know at some point over the next 6 to 18 months we'll see you know a significant uh movement whether up or down in stocks uh, and especially my portfolio as well and so you know it'll be interesting to see um how that plays out but um like i said thank you to everyone that's been watching the videos please like please comment Please subscribe. If there's anything that I've missed off or that you want to know more about, definitely leave in the comments and I'll try and get back to you um, as soon as possible. I had some feedback actually that um, I speak too quickly in my portfolio updates. So I try to make a conscious effort this time around to speak a little bit more slowly. And so 
um, be be better understood. So hopefully um, you find that this, this update was a lot more valuable. Just apologies for not being on the right screen at the right time. Um, but hey ho, uh, you know, these things happen when you're, when you're trying to record something live. Other than that, have a great weekend. Enjoy your weekend wherever you are. Um, and, you know, last but not least, happy investing. Take care, guys.